Cases of neurodegenerative diseases are growing worldwide. Can hyperbaric oxygen be used to help these patients with neurodegenerative disease? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. Neurodegenerative diseases can be categorized as a chronic disease of the central nervous system where the neurons of the brain and central nervous system are being damaged and destroyed over time. The signs and symptoms of neurodegenerative diseases would be categorized by the types of cells or the location within the central nervous system that is being damaged. Currently, there are no cures for chronic neurodegenerative diseases. However, we're all looking for solutions to help stabilize the signs and symptoms of these diseases, to help improve their quality of life as much as we can, and in some of these cases, even reverse some of the damage being done by these neurodegenerative diseases. And so what role could hyperbaric oxygen therapy play in supporting patients with neurodegenerative disease? There are certain common denominator that virtually all the diseases in this category share. Some of these include mitochondrial dysfunction, chronic inflammation, chronic hypoxia in the regions of the brain that are being affected, and chronic inflammation within the central nervous system itself. Now, what is it that we know about hyperbaric? We know that hyperbaric will deliver oxygen to all of the working cells and tissues in our body. And so if we have an area of chronic hypoxia, like we do in most neurodegenerative diseases, increasing the oxygen level will act as a fuel to help support that hypoxic cell and tissue. We also know that hyperbaric helps to reduce the cytokine response and reduce the inflammatory response systemically throughout the whole body. So if we have a category of disease that is consistently found to have higher levels of inflammation, we know that hyperbaric can help reduce that inflammatory response. We also know that hyperbaric delivers oxygen to the working cells to increase cellular energy production. So when we have mitochondrial dysfunction as a hallmark of a disease, we know that hyperbaric oxygen will help improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of the mitochondria's ability to produce cellular energy. We also know that hyperbaric oxygen is gonna reduce oxidative stress in the area. A lot of this neurologic damage is done by oxidative stress. And hyperbaric reduces oxidative stress by increasing the body's own endogenous antioxidant system. And so after a series of treatments in a lot of these patients, we're gonna see a reduction in oxidative stress. Even though we know that hyperbaric is somewhat of an oxidative therapy, we also know that the long-term benefit of hyperbaric is improved antioxidant systems inside their body. We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. And lastly, we know that hyperbaric stimulates neuroplasticity. So in so many of these cases where there's neuron damage, we can see neuron healing, we could see neuron repair, we could also see growth factors and central nervous system stem cells moving into the area in order to repair and heal the neuron damage. We also know that hyperbaric will stimulate improved synapse connection with nearby neurons, improving the whole neuroplasticity of the brain itself. So with all these obvious mechanisms of action, hyperoxygenation for the hypoxic tissues, all the neuroplasticity, all the growth factors and stem cells, the reduction of inflammation and the reduction of oxidative stress, most certainly hyperbaric should be considered in almost every case with a chronic neurodegenerative disease. And so establishing that hyperbaric is appropriate in these cases, what might some different protocols look like? Well, in almost all neurological cases, with few exception, the majority of neurodegenerative cases in our offices would be treated at mild to moderate pressures. In other words, somewhere between a 1.3 atmospheric pressure to a 1.75 atmospheric pressure. Typically, neurodegenerative disease, we keep below 2 ATA. Why do we do that? For us, it's because most of the vasoconstriction that occurs because of hyperbaric oxygen happens in the central nervous system. In other words, the nervous system is protecting itself from excessively high levels of oxygen. So in my mind, I'm trying to deliver as much oxygen as we can for this patient to improve all of the systems that we talked about while also reducing the vasoconstriction and the protective mechanisms that the body has that may reduce some of the oxygen ultimately getting to the brain. In addition to that, one of the main reasons we have vasoconstriction inside the central nervous system is the body's attempt to reduce the risk 
of central nervous system oxygen toxicity. And while the central nervous system has a high metabolic activity rate, meaning it requires a lot of oxygen for function, it's also sensitive to getting too much oxygen. And so if we can find a protocol that delivers a large quantity of oxygen under the radar and keeping that patient safe while also making it an effective therapy for them, that's my go-to protocol in those cases. And so for patients with neurodegenerative disease where we're trying to treat the nervous system, knowing that the nervous system is the most sensitive, and in these cases, the central nervous system is damaged, we have to be very careful with how much oxygen we're delivering. And so our protocols would range from 1.3 to 1.75, the overwhelming majority getting somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5 ATA. And a very standard program for us would be 60 to 90 minutes per session, four to six sessions per week for a minimum of three months. This protocol, like other protocols that I've offered throughout this channel, really come from a textbook that Dr. Joe DeTore and I wrote, and we finally published in October, The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Medicine, which is now available. So if you're interested in that book and you're wanting to learn more and apply these principles in your practice, click on the link in the description below and grab yourself a copy today. Thanks again for your attention, and I'll see you on the next video.